outside of Cardano, you know, outside of all the deals, the partnerships, crypto, YouTube interviews like this one, the news, the noise, you know, the Charles that's just kind of hanging out in the farm, the ranch, what is your favorite part of life? Like, how is life, number one, but what's your favorite part of life outside crypto? That's a great question. It's a good way to open it. Um, you know, I, the problem with being an entrepreneur is that you start obsessed with something and it becomes kind of your life mission and, and you go and follow that. And then these concepts like work-life balance, health, you know, sanity, uh, they, they go out the window and you're just really pushing and pushing and pushing. And then what ends up happening if you start succeeding is that you start getting more blessings and fortunes. And then you get into a position where you can go up for air and you find that you're a bit asymmetrical as a person. Uh, so certain parts of yourself get hyper-developed, like your ability to solve complex problems and public speaking and your ability to perform well under stress. But then other things like your interpersonal relationships and potentially your capacity to express emotions and empathy uh, other such things maybe got stunted because you underdeveloped them. You, you kind of put them on hold for five, 10 years while you're building your company. Uh, so uh, what I've been trying to do in the last few years has been take some time to really develop up that corpus. You know, so I've been meditating a lot more. I went to a silent meditation retreat for a whole week and, you know, I, I bought the ranch and I raised bison and, you know, I, I've been trying really hard to connect to the earth. And so I grow a lot of stuff. I, you know, my, for everything from mycological endeavors where I grow lion's mane to hydroponic crops to hay in the fields, you know, these types of things. And it grounds you a lot. You know, the other thing is that I've been trying very heavily to improve empathy and, and my ability to relate, communicate with people, because I think there's a huge deficit for that in the world. Uh, so I try to find ways to just put myself in other people's shoes and, you know, try to relate to them, in some cases work with them. Uh, and I also have a lot of old passions that I had to put on the on the coat hanger, like, for example, video games. You know, when I was a kid, that was a big part of my life. And most people can relate. And then, you know, become an entrepreneur, you know, first to academia, you know, you can't, you don't have time for it. You're busy studying and these things. And then you become an entrepreneur, you don't have time for it. You're busy building a company. So it's been good to kind of get back into that a little bit and say, okay, well, I can't be there like I used to, but Maybe I can be there in a different way that's somehow synergistic to the entire lifestyle. So any given week, it's uh, it's always something different. And uh, I just got back from Las Vegas, for example. I was at the Consumer Electronics Expo. And there was like a Cardano reason. There were some NFT players there. But also it was biomedical. You know, I was there with my dad and brother. They're both doctors. And we spent a lot of time just going through talking to people, do biosensors and all these other things, and just seeing the state of the art there. And it was so cool to be talking with my dad and my brother, you know, and having a discussion, how could we apply this for health and wellness and improve people's lives and, uh, and actually see the future. You know, we'd always been talking about these things like real time continuous glucose monitors or other things. And now they're there, they exist. And you can say, okay, well, now that we have them, what do we do with them? And so those are the kinds of things I do for fun, you know, and they add a lot of value to my life and they, and they give me a lot of grounding and clarity and, they help me kind of manage the negativity and toxicity and damage that uh, cryptocurrencies tend to inflict on people. It's a very unusual industry where y you get brutalized. It's almost like being a politician and you have to go through this cleansing and detox and, you know, kind of, you know, reset your soul in a certain respect because every week is so brutal.